So um, I'm Carl. For those of you who don't speak Norwegian, for those who do, I'm Carl Trigve. Um, Ola, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm Ola Andre, um, creator of uh, I created Frida in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, started on technology in 2008. Some other technology underlying it. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, and I joined a few years later, and mm. contributed to do some parts that we're going to cover here in the, in the talk today. And um, in general, um, so well, perhaps we should say that uh, already. So we're reverse engineers. We 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 use what is given to us, as we said earlier. The logo has kindly been ripped off from the Jekyll RB uh, templating engine. Uh, there will be other things which have been ripped off from other people as we go along. You'll, you'll figure it out. The motivation for uh, for doing Frida or reverse, well, reverse engineering tools in general is that uh, we have a bunch of software uh, around us that, even though we like open source software, the, the world contains also about a bunch of, of software that where there is no source code. It might be closed source software where the proprietor of the software didn't actually want us to have the source code in the first place, or Equally common, I guess, after a while, is, is software where the sources are actually gone, just have the binary left. Uh, and to some extent, there are embedded systems in the field where when you want to do the debugging and figure out what's going to happen, you don't actually have the ability to do any kind of sensible debugging tools because of it's optimized away and putting the genie back into the bottle is difficult. Uh, and, and you actually want to see the what's happening in the wild and before you try to recreate uh, a simulation of it uh, in the lab. Um, so there is a bunch of software then without source code, uh, and you need to coexist with it somehow, even if, as most people here, I suppose, you're, you're passionate about open source software. So there are various kinds of ways of doing that. Uh, you can try to do interoperation, like Samba, for example, um, or you might want to do subsumption, just basically replacing over time the the, the software with something new, something open, something nice. And that sort of could argue what's slowly happening in the web space or web. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> actually, it, it, it is. Um, then there is, uh, I suppose, assimilation, which uh, the M player guys have been doing that pretty well. Uh, in, in back in the day, they sort of ripped out various kinds of codecs in binary form just off the internet and uh, assim assimilated into the, the, the open source uh, M player. Uh, project to do the decoding, and then after a while they might have been able to replace some of these codecs. So DivX was one of those examples back in the nine, or early 2000s. And then I suppose there is straight out annihilation where you basically want somehow to, to pick the thing apart and totally replace it uh, in, a, in, a, in a more, what should I say, offensive manner. Uh, might be because of DRM reasons or well, other kinds of political motivations. Uh, the toolkit we're going to talk about would be useful in most of these cases. Um, but a fundamental part is if you want to do any of these things, you need some information. You need some information about the software that you're going to either replace, interoperate with, take pieces out of, or, or, or just straight out destroy. Um, so Frida is, um, is a, a dynamic instrumentation toolkit. Uh, and by that we mean that we use it to debug live uh, processes uh, with, it, it's sort of in the vein of, of GNU debugger or LDB or um, Visual Studio's debugger, if you will. Um, like the GDB, uh, it is scriptable. Unlike the GDB, we have used a different scripting solution. We'll get yeah. to that, which might be more familiar and loved slash hated by people. Um, and it is, Frida is, is multi-platform, so um, while it, it runs and executes on, on Windows, Mac and Linux, you can also use it to debug into processes running on iOS and Android. Um, and, uh, well, uh, many of the close things that you're going to look at, especially for reverse engineering and, and, and interoperability purposes, they, they are perhaps even more frequent on the commercial operating systems than they are on Linux. Uh, License-wise, uh, Frida is an open source project. It's a license under the WX Windows license, which is equivalent to, L or is, LGPL plus the static linking exception. 
Now, if you really want to be technical, we do bend, uh, depend on a few LGPL libraries pretty closely, so the static linking exception is, in practice, might not be useful for you. Uh, but, but, well, this is a technical talk and not necessarily a licensed technical talk, so we'll, we'll skip that bit. So, why would you need Frida, just to sum up? Uh, well, it's, it is a reverse engineering tool, uh, and, and it is programmable debugging, which is slightly different from, from top typical debugging. And, and dynamic instrumentation is basically, should I say, the, the, the catch-all big phrase that, that we, we're using it as. And of, of course, we, we think that it might be useful for doing some good in the world, but that's more of a, what should I say, a moralistic selling point, I suppose. Yes, yes, I, I, abs absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, just like as with LS and CAT, they will, they will use it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. So for the for the viewers, if if they didn't catch that, uh, the the basic conclusion here was that copy and CP should be banned and out, outlawed because they're evil. Anyway. Uh, Reverse engineering, for those, most of you might know, most of you, some might not, uh, it's about discovering technological principles of a device, object or system through analysis and its structure, function and operation. Sounds like a very long thing, but basically it's about thinking, taking things apart and, and looking and seeing how they work. And, and in general, we need for protocol, say, interoperability, video f format playback, API compatibility, unlocking of hardware, recovering lost memories, if you will. Uh, so the, uh, say for example, the, the, the emulation scene has been doing a lot of reverse engineering old hardware and old software so that we can play the games we played in our childhood, I suppose, again. Uh, in the browser, uh, except for Twitter, that which closed that possibility just the other day. But that's a different thing. Okay, so we're at the situation where everything now is awesome. And um, uh, we... Um, we do want to, to look at native software. That, that's the basic idea with, with Frida. Um, we, um, Frida is, is targeted at, at binary, uh, sort of traditional binary applications running on uh, the aforementioned operating systems. We're not looking at, uh, well, it's not primarily looking at high level uh, dynamic languages. They have a complete different runtime and, and a bunch of things are happening in there that we don't have. Well, we are integrating with that too. Yeah, we're, we're integrating with it, but but that's not where we started. No. So we we started with with the typical traditional compiled style languages like C, C++, uh, and 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 software written in those languages. And before we go on, uh, perhaps we should have a small show of hands of a couple of things, uh, just to know to gauge the audience a little bit. So, uh, any of you actually programmed static languages like C, C++? Right, uh, how about uh, Assembler? Okay, that's cool. Uh, so you know a little bit about it. Uh, are, you f are you comfortable with terms like uh, processes, process IDs, heaps, memory, uh, registers, threads? The fact that you're comfortable with threads scares me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a anyway. Okay, so then this is going to be just a short recap. So, um, what I'm showing here is the, the stippled square, well, rectangular box is a process. It has some process ID, which we use to identify it, and inside of it, the green part is basically the, the memory space, which uh, we allocate uh, various kinds of, by using memory mapping or other techniques, we allocate chunks of the memory for various kinds of purposes. So the heap, for example, uh, is there, the stack would be there, I just didn't draw it. Uh, and and uh, various in the traditional world of, of binary software then, uh, binary files like the dynamic libraries and the program itself, in this case the program is called Out, uh, is, is mapped into this memory space. And then uh, conceptually, the way we think about it in the talk is that each thread contains the registers uh, and the stack pointer and a few other things, right? So you might have sort of multiple CPUs uh, executing inside of this progress, uh, program concurrently, uh, and, and those CPUs are called threads. It, those technical details about sort of 
the mapping of, of virtual threads to real cores is not really important for us. But threading is going to be an issue when we discuss a few details later on. Um, and they may be executing cur concurrently in various parts of the program. Okay, um, so what we're going to talk about here is some basic Frida skills, and we're going to give demos. So uh, we're going to have a bunch of demos. Most of them will probably crash at some point, so bear with us. This is that's always a problem with, with playing around with demos. But we're going to show you some basic Frida skills along the way, like how you attach Frida to a process, how you hook, hook functions in this process, how you can modify the function arguments, calling functions, inspecting memory, and modifying memory, which is pretty much the things that you would do with any debugger kind of style, except in this case, you don't actually have the source code and there is no debugging information and you're moving into a process which was certainly either not designed to or even intentionally designed not to be able to be debugged. Oh, right, so you can th uh, think of it as, as uh, so um, the question is, yeah. the question is the question. How, what, what do I mean by hooking a function? Uh, and it's, there are many words for it, so it could be trapping, trapping a function, detouring. Or, or detouring, or intercepting a function. So basically, when a function inside of here is called, we want to know about it, and we might want to react to it. Right, so, so, hmm. right, so indeed, uh, so the, the comment was, it, it's sort of similar to setting a breakpoint, and that's sort of true. <laughs> uh, the the, the, the breakpoint here, in this case, can only be set set at the start of a given function. So uh, the, the smallest unit that we can talk about, or we can start talking about in Frida, is the function level. So we can do stuff inside of the functions, but somehow we need to know where the inside of the function is. So we use we used symbols in the symbol table, and we use a few other tricks to sort of to, to glean ahead and, and, and look into the details of the structure of a binary. And, and the landscape consists of functions, and that's our ent entry points, usually. Okay, um, so time for a demo, or a, a couple of demos. And I'm going to hand over to Ola André. Let's see. Yeah, so um, let's just uh, show this on Windows, um, where there's more uh, uh, paranoid software than on the other OSs, or there's a lot of it anyway. Um, so just as an example, we're going to take, uh, yeah, imagine this is in the future. Um, there's this music player that everyone uses, but you are not using that operating system that they support, or one of them that they support. Uh, so you need to interoperate with it. Um, and it happens to be Spotify, as a made-up example here. Um, and uh, sure, yeah, here it is. And um, you're... Uh, You're, um, you pick up a traditional debugger. You could pick up Oli Debug, which is uh, quite popular for assembly level uh, debugging. And just pay attention now to Spotify. Down there, there, it's gone. So uh, Spotify detects this debugger and exits. Uh, and that's quite common in commercial software to have this kind of anti debug measures to make it a bit harder to reverse engineer. Uh, and uh, we can now try, uh, yeah, there's actually a zombie process now. Let's see, kill. Um, so we can now spawn it again. So it's running. And uh, now let's try Frida. Uh, Frida is like an engine for instrumentation, but we have some tools that are built on the engine to show know how you can use Frida, uh, but it's scriptable, so you can do pretty much anything you want. Um, so here we'll try Frida Trace. Uh, we say that we're interested in uh, the draw text EXW API, just for argument's sake. And this is in Spotify. And uh, running that. And there, we started tracing it, and now if we uh, play around in menus, you'll see that the API is used. Okay. So, uh, and if you pay attention here, uh, it generated a, a handler on the file system, uh, in jo which is JavaScript code, and we can edit it uh, live. We don't have to reload or restart. Um, so we can go here to our handler. Um, 
So here you have uh, a JavaScript on enter function. <laughs> Whoa! Don't. Um, what happened there? Yeah, exactly. So the last last year, uh, last night, full screening was not a good idea. So we right. have to make the window a bit smaller. <laughs> <laughs> So, but uh, I suppose if you use Frida on the video uh, conferencing system, we will be able to track down the bug <laughs> in a few weeks. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, we c let's not gamble on full screening. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this this file is generated. Um, I'll just undo it. So this is what it looks like. Uh, there is an on enter callback in, um, where you have uh, a few things. You can look at the arguments. Uh, you need to know about the arguments, how many there are. There, there's no such API, uh, info in available at the dynamic level here without debug symbols. Um, and uh, you can do log, for example, to send something over to the, the debugger side. Um, so, uh, but this is generated. It could be uh, using man pages. It does actually do that on uh, Unix. We look up man pages to find out how many arguments are there. Uh, but we could do more fancy things. Uh, oops. So, uh, right. I think full screen is fine then. Um, so here we have we're dealing with draw text exw. That's uh, Windows API for drawing text. So we can look up the documentation quickly, and we'll see that the, well, I'm just going to save some time here and say that the second argument is the string to, to draw, uh, and the th third one is the length. So, uh, <laughs> well. <laughs> Something is overheating, I guess. Uh, can we, uh, maybe if we change the resolution, lower the resolution. Yeah, 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 great idea. Okay. So, what am I doing? Skew somewhere right. else. Okay. Manner that face again. Okay. Let's right. See. Okay. We upgraded to VGA. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we're back here. Um, let's make this a bit more interesting. Uh, we can look at arguments, we can also modify them. So. Let's just uh, allocate a UTF-16 string once. Uh, and then uh, every time it's called, we update the fr uh, second argument to uh, the pointer that was allocated with the string. And the third argument, minus one, means uh, this is null terminated. OK. So now, uh, did I actually stop the tracing? No, I didn't. Yeah, now you can see the menus are being drawn with a new string. Uh, but yeah, you could use this for crypto APIs. You could hook crypto APIs, look at what kind of hashing they're doing and what kind of input data and so on, so on, so on. Yeah, you could uh, make it lead speak, or translate live to lead speak, the UI if you want. Yeah, 
Uh, you, you, microphone. Um, you, you could use that for a known text attack, so you could supply their, crypt, their encryptor function with its magic black box on the inside with a text you've chosen so that you can mm. actually analyze it. A very good point, yeah. So, uh, yeah, your, uh, your creativity is the limit here. You can do a lot of things. Uh, and morals, I suppose. So, um, uh, what do you say here? Um, that would be from that. Yeah, okay. Right. So let's go back on Mac again. Um, uh, yeah, maybe uh, uh, we could show this with a Twitter, a Twitter app. Uh, we also have a Red Bull, uh, so you can experiment. Uh, so you just need to give it a process name. And here we go. I have a REPL. Uh, you can do tab completion and you see what kind of uh, APIs are available in the JavaScript world. Uh, and right, what so, uh, yeah. so the, the scripting solution we chose instead of GDB was, was JavaScript. Um, we sort of uh, decided that that would fly better on Hacker News and it did. <laughs> <laughs> Hacker, Hacker News. News. Yes. So uh, um, what you saw earlier was Interceptor that was intercepting function calls. Uh, you can do Interceptor attached to attach to any function in memory. You just need its address. Uh, and you give it some JavaScript callbacks, and that's it. Uh, uh, on, uh, yeah. Maybe Objective -C. yeah, we also have an Objective-C integration uh, that's uh, dynamically inspecting the runtime. Um, so you can. Uh, Look at the loaded classes uh, in this process. Um, say n as a string for s as a string, uh, and you can tab complete on the class functions. You can then call them. You can ho hook them. Uh, we also have a Dalvik integration for Android uh, that could later be extended to Java, being Java, uh, generic uh, Java VM. I mean, 90 90, 95% of the code is generic, non-Dalvik specific. So. Uh, but yeah, so um, that's it. And we have, um, so th there's this core library uh, that exposes a C API, uh, but it's meant just for static linking uh, into bindings. So you'd have a Python binding, um, port Frida, Frida, attach, Twitter. And here we go, we have a session. With a session, we can create a script. Um, it could do, for so example, just console log. Hey there. And uh, have the script, we can load it. And there. Uh, we get the string sent over from the other side. So what's happening here is that V8 is running inside the other process and it's executing a script. And we have a two-way channel so we can communicate with it, send messages back and forth. Um, and uh, yeah, back to the process here. Uh, we could uh, read memory. Yeah. Uh, actually, forgot the API now. Uh, read uh, bytes uh, given a pointer. Uh, yeah. And the cool thing is, if you try to read memory, uh, you have full uh, jo uh, memory access from your JavaScript. Uh, if you try to read from inval an invalid pointer, you will get a JavaScript exception that you can handle. So here I try to read from an invalid address, and I got access violation reading, blah, blah, blah. Um, so you, uh, um. Is memory uh, being read? Inside the other process, yeah. and you don't get a page fault, is what you said? Yeah. Uh, and you can enumerate modules that are loaded, uh, enumerate memory ranges, uh, all that are read and execute at least. Here we go. Uh, you can scan memory for, for patterns, uh, and you can then combine that with the other tools to intercept and so on. Um, so, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, you have to build that yourself, but you could build that, yeah. <laughs> right, so the question was, uh, could you scan memory for uh, regions with high entropy, say? And yeah, if you do have uh, some sort of metric of entropy, you could just apply that over time. Yep. Uh, yeah, and given... Um, can you remember modules as I showed you, like libraries are loaded, um, oops. and uh, you can then enumerate exports of those, exported functions, uh, and then you can attach to those, of course. And that's what you saw earlier when I was using Frida Trace that was just looking at exports. So when you do dash i, it will look inside the exports of all the lo loaded libraries and match. And you can do like a globbing, so you can say read star or receive star, send star. So um, yeah, and uh, there's that was uh, the desktop part. Uh, there's a lot of proprietary software on mobile these days. So we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's also some other some other. Um, console tools, um, for example, Frida PS for listing processes. That's not that interesting locally, but if you use uh, dash U, you'll get a, it will wait for the USB device to appear. Uh, and, uh, and actually. Yeah, if you close down Pornhub, I guess. <laughs> have the software running here first. So. Um, and this could also be um, used remotely, so you could have a, you could set up uh, an SSH tunnel uh, from localhost to the other device localhost on a certain port, and you can use dash R instead of dash U for remote, and you can do remote debugging. Um, so that's how we, that's what we use on Android right now. Yeah, the you have to have. Is what what yeah. you have to have installed on the other end for the remote stuff to work. Exactly. Uh, you'll need a Frida server, um, so you just deploy that and run it. It's a single binary. There's no uh, runtime dependencies. It's statically linked and one file. Transfer it, run it, and that's it. So uh, we can connect my phone now. It should be hopefully running. Oh yeah, thank you, Apple. So. No, it's not running. Uh, well, okay, let's run it manually. It's a packaging issue there, probably. So, here we have the processes running on my phone. Cydia, Facebook, Hangouts, and so on. RSD Cloud. Uh, we could now use the REPL, and uh, yeah, we could get the Twitter app. On my phone, Frida dash U, Twitter. Yep, we're connected. Uh, and now we can look at the Objective C classes, which are somewhat different here. There should be UI uh, stuff, which aren't available now on OS 10. Um, yeah, we could uh, trace, um, say, uh, all of the lib common crypto API. Uh, in my Twitter process. Okay, and I'm gonna reload my feed here. Did you have dash u? Oh crap. I think <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> good catch. Uh, so the question is uh, if people can, if other software will start detecting Freed at some point. And yeah, essentially, yes, uh, it's an arms race, so, <laughs> but uh, enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> now, uh, we'll, for this is open source, we'll keep chasing that, uh, that cat, so to speak. Um, so, um, Frida. Yeah, forgot the dash U. Here we go. 
I'm reloading Twitter and uh, hit search for something on Twitter and you'll see uh, the crypto API is being used on the device. And here we can edit the JavaScript locally and explore the arguments and so on. So, uh, yep. uh, so uh, I still have some time, cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can run this locally, but it's gonna be It's uh, an old demo made a few years ago, so it's legacy code. Uh, I tried to revive it last night. Uh, Ten. All right. Yep. Uh, well, let's uh, let's show what I'm going to show. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so there is this uh, proof of concept app uh, br built as a browser app, just for fun. Uh, so here we're sh choosing a spot uh, process. We're choosing Spotify. Okay, attached. We we'll log in, and you'll see on the globe there now. There's uh, points popping up. Uh, depending on where it's communicating, uh, using doing live GeoIP lookups, and uh, showing you the streams, the file descriptors it detects live. And now let's try playing some music. This is peer to peer. Remember, just look at the globe now. So you see, it's uh, communicating quite differently now. see a sample of the data flowing. Yeah. So uh, I think I'm sort of right. So here uh, it also shows the 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 iOS support. So you can see here you get icons for the the processes as well running on your device. Uh, so you can build, build pretty cool tools with this, graphical tools even. Um, and that's what we're hoping will happen uh, by just providing a really cool engine. People can build li really awesome tools because when you're reverse engineering, you tend to hit new problems all the time and that's why you need different tools. And the tools may not exist and it would be good if there's a way to rapidly build tools. Uh, we also have a a QML plugin for those of you who want to play with Qt and build a graphical tool. Uh, and that's what I'm going to show now uh, here. Uh, this, is a, this is another tool that's using uh, uh, something we didn't show earlier, which is a code tracer. Uh, the next talk will go into detail on how that's implemented and all the, all the details there. Um, but here, um, we have Chrome running on the right, and we have our debugger on the left. And uh, actually, let's do this live. This is brave. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, for example, Spotify. That's what we're doing there. Um, and uh, we have Crypto Shark. So here, see the processes. Would like to attach to Spotify, and here we go. We see the threads uh, running here, and what's cool here is that we're using the interceptor that you saw earlier for tra uh, uh, 
hooking function calls. Uh, and we strategically instrument some APIs. And we're tagging the threads based on which APIs they use. Um, so if we now go and exercise the UI, uh, there might be, well, depends on luck, but I think we discovered the most important threads here anyway. But here there's one that's using file system, network, and IPC. Okay, we could follow that thread. And uh, now if, yeah, you'll see live calls happening inside different modules. So here, this one, or in Chromium Embedded Framework module, you have different functions discovered uh, dynamically. These are internal functions. They're not exported by the binary at all. There's no debug symbols that we're using. So we're discovering them live at runtime. And uh, the cool thing here is that uh, there is a scriptable part to it as well. So uh, let's pick an internal function here. And uh, we can add a probe to it. And here, you no now see uh, a script being run every time that function is called. And here's the script. You can edit it live. And, uh, and here you see the script is updated. So you can then uh, uh, interactively modify the script and look at arguments and uh, and observe and understand the internals. You could find internal logging functions for discovering. Uh, a big complicated applica applications usually have logging code internally and maybe it's just disabled. Well, you can find those functions. Uh, and it would be imaginable to take this further and this could actually uh, have some scripts uh, that are probing the arguments and looking for uh, like heuristics, looking at using heuristics to find strings and then uh, discovering internal logging functions that you can use to understand how uh, software is working uh, by just piggybacking on their own logging system. Um, yeah, so you can do that. You can remove the probes and you can uh, go explore around. Uh, and this is, uh, this part is x86 only, so, but it works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Right. Okay, that's Nearing, nearing the end. Yep. Okay, so um, any questions so far? More questions? Yeah, sure. Alex. So you said uh, it's uh, x86 only? It doesn't no, just this part. This, uh, e mm -hmm. The code tracer is x86 only. X86 only. So is that a limitation in Frida? Or, uh, yeah. It's just uh, we didn't implement it for uh, anything else than x 6 32 and 64-bit for now, that part. But you can hook APIs, what you saw earlier. This is just uh, tracing every single instruction that a thread is doing. You know? So it's, um, uh, and it's using uh, a dynamic recompilation at runtime. So it's instead of, uh, yeah, well, we'll get into these details. Yeah, we'll, so we'll talk about that in the next, next talk, exactly yeah. how that works. But uh, we can do instruction level debugging on x and high performance. And high performance instruction level debugging on x86, not ARM yet. Any more questions? I'm uh, curious if uh, you've uh, at all looked at a little bit of uh, decompilation. Decompilation, you mean? Um, well, yeah, I see you can trace and you find the. Um, functions in there that without it actually extracting any symbols then maybe yes it's cool to look at the assembly and uh, mm. sometimes you can actually work out what it's doing but uh, you could uh, potentially have a subroutine to attempt a decompilation of that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, we're, uh, I mean right now we're, uh, we, I'm a friend of um, the guy who started Radara which is another open source project for, uh, for static analysis and uh, w we would like to integrate with that clo more closely so that you can combine the two. You can use Frida for the dynamic part and Radar for the static part. And that's, I think, how we could get some really awesome tools. Yeah. So the question was, or the comment was, that presumably we should be able to find bugs in binaries using that because, I suppose, Indeed, it makes it slightly more readable for, for those of us who don't uh, read uh, assembly every day. 
Well, actually, we do, but that's a different matter altogether. And the, yeah, there's a lot of security researchers uh, playing with this for different purposes, like uh, penetration testing, and uh, uh, there's many use cases that I haven't thought, we haven't thought of. Okay, so um, that's that's it for the, the sort of the, the demo part. Uh, next talk, if anybody wants to stay around, is basically explaining more exactly what's the machinery behind this that allows us to do these kinds of things. So the next talk is going to approach it, uh, should I say, from uh, it's not possible to say high level in these cases, but uh, <laughs> but from a more general viewpoint, I suppose. And we'll look at some details uh, and some general techniques. Uh, but we're not, even though we discussed it, we're not going to start off with showing you the configure.ac. That is not going to be Frida specific as such. It's going to be a more general thing uh, about what's happening behind the scenes here. So. Thank you for this first talk about Frida, and uh, we will reconvene here in 15 minutes for the second half. Cool. cool.